What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Betsy and today we're doing something a little bit different than we usually do. Um, so as I'm sure you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about my experience with mono or Epstein-Barr virus and just kind of sharing a little bit about my history with mono and kind of some tips and tricks on how you can deal with the symptoms and just explaining what symptoms I'm currently having and how that kind of affects my day-to-day -day life and everything like that. Um, kind of the main reasons why I am sharing this information is just um, I'm hoping that other people can relate, um, other people that are going through something similar, whether it be actually having mono or having chronic fatigue, difficulty sleeping, or just um, struggling mentally with any sort of illness. I'm hoping this can help kind of just bring you some peace of mind and just kind of help you know you're not alone in going through your struggle. So a bit about my story and kind of my history with mono. Um, the first time I ever got mono was back the summer after my freshman year of college. And so um, I got it about April-ish, at least that's what they think. And then I wasn't actually diagnosed until about July. And so I um, had mono for a while at that time, but just kind of didn't really know about it until later on. The testing is just kind of so crazy. There's, um, a, typically they look for Epstein-Barr virus and that's kind of what they diagnose you with. Um, but with Epstein-Barr virus, once you have it, it never leaves your system. So it's always in your body. So when they're doing blood tests, they're looking for active Epstein-Barr virus and then just Epstein-Barr virus in your body. Um, so if it's active, that means you currently have Epstein-Barr virus and are experiencing active virus and active mono, um, which is why you'll see, I kind of talk about it, it reactivating multiple times in me. So anyways, that was the first time I had it back in 2015. I had it again spring and summer of 2019, uh, so I was diagnosed this time with active mono in May and then actually never tested negative again after that. Um, I was tested again in July of 2019 and it still came back as active mono. And then uh, most recent time I have mono is right now I was diagnosed back in September and then it just got retested this past week and it still came back active, which was really frustrating. But um, so yeah, I've had it for about five months at this point, which is just crazy and just hard to um, wrap my head around the fact that I've had mono for five months, um, which if you're not uh, familiar, the typical course of mono is about three to sometimes six weeks. So typically a month or two month, two months and you will start feeling better. Um, so that's kind of my story with mono and Epstein-Barr virus. At this point, um, I've been told that I have chronic Epstein-Barr virus, which is honestly something that's pretty new as far as being recognized in the medical field. They've diagnosed me with chronic Epstein-Barr virus, which means it is just reactivating and reactivating in my system. And this time I'm gonna be very vigilant about continuing to get tested and making sure that eventually I come out of that active state because it's just not healthy for your body to always be in active mono. So my current symptoms right now, um, obviously the main one that everyone knows about is fatigue. Um, so I definitely am more tired than I would think an average 24 year old would be. Um, I guess I have nothing really to compare that to just because this is how I've always been, um, or at least that's how what it feels like. But I definitely like am very strict with my sleeping schedule. I have to make sure that I'm getting um, preferably 10 hours or more a night. And if I don't, like I notice it, I wake up feeling like I never went to sleep, which is always frustrating to wake up and feel like you never even went to sleep when you did. Um, so definitely I'm pretty strict on myself for like getting enough sleep and um, making sure I try to handle the fatigue as best I can. Uh, the other thing that has kind of been more of a struggle this past time that I've had mono 
is having trouble falling asleep, which you would think like, if I'm so tired, how could I possibly be having trouble falling asleep? But trust me, it is the most frustrating thing. And I'm so thankful I didn't have this the first two times I had mono, but I have such a hard time going to sleep at night. Like it takes me like sometimes one to two hours to go to sleep. And um, that's really hard when you're like so exhausted and really want to go to sleep. So um, that's definitely one of the symptoms I'm struggling with this time. Um, I'm also just kind of always have a stuffy nose, just like chronically stuffy and have been feeling like I am feverish. Like I'm always really, really cold um, and like feel like I have a fever, but then I take my temperature and I don't. So always really cold. And then sort of, I guess the last one is just like feeling really weak, like feeling like I wouldn't be able to do a hike if I wanted to, or wouldn't be able to complete a specific exercise regimen if I even wanted to. Um, so just kind of feeling like weak and feeling like I can't do the things that I wanna do or like keep up with other people basically. All of those symptoms definitely kind of have been having an impact on my mental state and just like kind of how I perceive myself and how I feel like other people are perceiving me. Um, so sort of the main one that I struggle with, and there's kind of two that I'll talk, talk about, but it's just like feeling like either I feel like I'm being lazy or like other people perceive me as being lazy because I like, can't get out of bed one day or I have to go home and go to bed at eight or nine. Um, so just feeling like inadequate in certain areas of my life and just feeling like people are perceiving me as being lazy, which that's like literally the opposite of what I want to be perceived as. I am very much like a goal oriented type of person where I always want to be kind of like achieving that next sort of step in my life. So it's definitely hard to kind of feel like I'm behind on certain things that like my peers are a bit ahead on. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I am still in college. I'm getting my PhD in biology. So being in school has definitely not helped with my Epstein-Barr virus and it is a stress induced uh, virus. And so anytime I get stressed, that's when I know it's gonna reactivate, so. I definitely have to be uh, very focused on keeping my stress levels down and just being very mindful of where I am mentally so that I can uh, make sure that to keep my symptoms as low grade as possible. Uh, so the next kind of thing I struggle with mentally is just kind of like seeing my life without mono in it. <laughs> I just feel like this has been such a long drawn out experience and it's been like what six years since my first diagnosis with mono so um it's just hard to feel like this is going to be my life forever you know that's kind of how i've been feeling recently is like is this ever going to end am i going to struggle with this my entire life um how will this impact my future career you know like will i be able to be the teacher that I want to be in the future and um, be good at my job despite, you know, sometimes having to take a day off or, you know, things like that. So it's just like hard to see past the sickness, I guess, and hard to see, um, yeah, I guess just how I will come through this. So that's kind of one thing that, or I guess the second main thing that I've been struggling with mentally. Um, and I'll kind of talk about things that I do to help my mental state as well as my symptoms and get into that right now. Um, so kind of some tips and tricks as far as how I sort of handle my symptoms and how I sort of help them to be pretty low grade and very like controlled and contained. Um, so the, fir the first one for fatigue, because this is something pretty much everyone experiences if they have mono. One thing I highly recommend is being really strict with yourself with getting enough sleep um, and don't feel bad about it. Like, don't feel bad that you have to go to sleep at eight or nine. Like, that's totally fine. Everyone should be understanding of that. And just try not to worry about what other people are thinking. So that's one thing I struggled with was like feeling like a loser for going to bed at eight o'clock. 
but you're not, you're just taking care of your body. So um, definitely be really regimented and also plan ahead. Um, this is one thing that I've learned is like, if I know I'm gonna be up later one night, I will plan the next day to be um, pretty slow, pretty chill, so that I have time to kind of recover and give my body the time that it needs to um, start feeling rested and everything like that. So definitely plan ahead. You can still be social. You can still do things when you have mono, um, but you need to make sure that you've planned ahead and are ready for, you're gonna feel tired the next day. And just kind of with the fatigue, just kind of be easy with yourself. Like give yourself a nap if you need it. Um, give yourself an hour to sleep in. Uh, just be easy on yourself, let yourself rest. The longer you kind of put off that rest and everything, just the longer that it's gonna keep going on, which I'm like the worst person to say that because I definitely do push through my mono way more than I should. Um, but don't be afraid to like be easy on yourself when you need to rest. Um, so going into the trouble falling asleep, and I'm sure there's so many people watching this who have trouble going to sleep. Um, so these are just some tips that I have found that have been helpful. Um, the first one is actually drinking uh, tea before bed, and there's a specific kind of tea that I've tried recently that has really, really helped. It's called holy basil tea, and you can just find it on Amazon. And drinking that before bed, it's amazing. I don't know what is in it specifically, but it's um, it just puts you right to sleep. And so that tea really helps if you're struggling with going to sleep, definitely buy some holy basil tea. And the other things are just very simple, like bedtime routines. Uh, so kind of come up with a routine that you can implement into your schedule every night before bed um, so that it kind of trains your body to know, okay, you, you know, we're kind of winding down for the night and getting ready to go to sleep. Um, that's really important just for anyone to do, but especially if you're having trouble falling asleep, make sure you're kind of teaching your body um, the things you do before bed to help yourself wind down. I know for me, that's reading. I love reading. Um, so I read every night before bed instead of like being on my phone or something like that because we all know screens before bed is not the best to help with healthy sleep habits. So again, this is definitely not something I'm perfect with, but especially now that I have an alarm clock, it's really helpful. It sounds really stupid and simple, but having an alarm clock helps me. Like I can just put my phone really far from my bed and I don't even have to worry about, you know, using it to wake up in the morning. So that's another tip if you are just looking to even just get off your phone before bed. Another thing that people don't know if they should do while they have mono is exercise. Um, I've found that I can't go crazy with exercise. So for me, what I found that works best is just kind of some light exercise, but definitely make sure you're moving, you're doing things. Um, because it just, it helps your muscles. It helps with the weakness side of things. Um, it will also help if you're having trouble falling asleep, you know, if you're, if you're a bit more worn out physically, that will help. So just kind of going on walks, stretching, yoga. I actually don't like yoga, so I don't use that one, but I know a lot of people love it. So yoga is a good one for kind of low impact, um, working out, but definitely make sure you are still working out despite having mono. And the last one that I do for many different reasons, but is try to eat as clean of foods as you possibly can. Uh, so for me personally, I follow like a paleo style diet. Um, I'll kind of put in the description box exactly the foods that I personally avoid. Um, and there's no set diet. Like I'm not saying you have to be paleo, but just eating clean whole foods is really good to give your body the energy it needs and not just like straight up sugar that comes from, you know, processed foods. Um, so definitely try to eat as clean as you can, whether that means you follow a specific diet or just try to, trying to incorporate more fruits, veggies, you know, whole meats. Um, it's definitely really good and very helpful. Um, and then the last thing that really helps me personally, um, I mean, if you've been on my channel for a while now, you know that I am a Christian and, you know, my faith is really important to me. Um, and that's honestly one of the things that really has helped me get through this whole experience of having mono for so long. Um, 
just like staying rooted in God's word and knowing that, you know, someone else is looking out for me other than myself is just like so helpful. It gives you such peace of mind. And, you know, just knowing that, you know, there's so many passages in the Bible that talk about God's um, control and God's protection and provision over our lives. Um, Matthew 11, 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then another one I love, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who give me, gives me strength. Uh, so just kind of keeping those in the back of my head and knowing that God's not going to give me anything that I can't handle. Um, that's just really helpful. It really helps me personally. The last thing I want to talk about really, really quickly is just doctors. Um, I know it can be really, really frustrating dealing with, you know, uh, medicine these days. So um, one thing that I found that's really helpful is like, don't be afraid to ask for the specific test that you know you want done. Um, I just go to my doctor and tell her I run, want an Epstein-Barr panel run and she will order it for me. So don't be afraid to do that. Like doctors will listen to you. Um, yes, they have recommendations, but uh, don't be afraid to ask for that. The other thing, um, I can't really speak on this a ton yet, but I am going to see a functional medicine doctor. And that's something that I have been, it has been recommended to me a couple times now. And so I am going to see a functional medicine doctor. Um, they just kind of practice more holistic medicine and can help you kind of get to the root of your um, issues and everything like that, as opposed to just kind of treating the symptoms. So I will report back and see how that goes, um, but I'm really excited for that as well. So that's just kind of a general idea. If you can go see a functional medicine doctor, definitely it won't hurt to give it a try, um, especially if your normal, you know, regular care doctor is not really giving you the answers that you're looking for or hoping for. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much it. I know that was a lot of information. Um, but hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully, um, if you know someone who's struggling with Epstein-Barr virus or any other illness, hopefully this just gives you some ways to uh, be praying for them, to be helping them, um, or anything like that. And just kind of, um, if you yourself are struggling with this, hopefully you got some tips and tricks to get through it. Um, we are all in this together and, um, you can do it and I can do it and we can help each other. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna stick around, make sure to hit that the subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.